this is my presentation on Chernobyl, nuclear disaster that brought innovation towards making the electricity safer than before. You'll be learning about Chernobyl's history on what happened and how it happened. But before we move on to Chernobyl, we'll have to talk about three important things to understand the concept. Those being electricity, power plants, and radiation. Starting with electricity, I'm sure we all know what electricity is, but why is it important? Well, without electricity, we wouldn't have lights. Mm -hmm. Like that. <laughs> Another thing I'll be off without electricity is I wouldn't have a microphone. So I'd have to yell out to all of you so you can hear me. <laughs> Another thing that will be gone with uh, electricity being gone would be your phones and internet. No, what a shame. <laughs> now, can anyone name where uh, electricity is made? You. Correct. Power plants uh, make electricity. There are lots of types of power plants, but the one we're talking about today is a nuclear power plant. This is a future normal. Like all the power plants, they all make electricity. But how they make electricity is different. For example, solar power requires the sun to make electricity, wind power requires wind, and water power requires water. But how does a nuclear power plant make electricity? Like a coal plant, it requires a material that needs to be burned down and turned into heat energy. But instead of coal, we have rare and stable materials called uranium and plutonium. These materials are unstable because they have radiation. Radiation is an unstable power that can be found everywhere. Has anyone had a sunburn before? Raise your hand. Well, guess what? That's from radiation from the sun hitting your arm and damaging your skin. Radiation can be found everywhere in all versions of light. Ultraviolet, infrared, visible light, all colors have radiation too. Now, radiation can be used for good things and bad things. Though it can be used for things like atomic bombs, or the nuke for short, it can also be used for healthy things like microwaves and x-rays. A microwave requires uh, radiation so it can heat up food, and x-rays require radiation so they can see through things, like your body, as seen on this image. Uh, Chernobyl uses these two powers of radiation, uranium and plutonium, as its way to the fuel. We're going to finally move on to Chernobyl because this is how uh, it's explained in an easier way. Chernobyl was built in Soviet Russia, or currently in Ukraine. As seen on this map here, the red part of this map is Russia, the yellow part is Ukraine, and you can see that Chernobyl is in purple, barely, it's pretty small. But there's a spot there, and that is where Chernobyl is. Chernobyl powered a city called Pripyat. It was home to 200,000 individuals and was once prosperous until a famous nuclear disaster happened, the Chernobyl nuclear disaster of 1986. The Chernobyl incident happened after the uranium and plutonium got really unstable and created too much heat, and it started melting the concrete and metal walls surrounding the core. This led to the uh, explosion here on this image, where you can see the roof is exploded. What happened was they got too hot and an emergency cooling system was activated to try to cool it down, but it was too late, and the water immediately evaporated the steam, low pressure, and eventually caused this explosion. Radiation was poured everywhere after the explosion, starting to poison everything, whether it be plants or creatures. In Perkia, it was no longer a safe place because of how much radiation there was. In fact, it had become a ghost town in a matter of weeks. Because over 125,000 people died to the radiation poisoning. Very unfortunate. That's over half the population there. After the events of Chernobyl, a very strange thing was formed after the meltdown called the Elephant Split. The Elephant Split is a, a blob at the very bottom of Chernobyl, specifically in the basement, and it is made of quite a few things silicon dioxide, magnesium, uranium, zirconium, titanium, and graphite, meaning it's a forbidden pencil. And also, it is super highly radioactive. It can kill an individual full armor protection against it in 200 seconds. Not a good thing to be here. You know, like this guy. This guy is actually right next to the office, but it's unknown what he's doing because the radiation can burn film on a camera, making it impossible to tell what's happening. But it's one of the very few images of the Elephant Split itself. 
Nearly four decades later after this incident, it is still possible to learn and see the areas that were affected, specifically the city of Pripyat, but people cannot live there. You can visit it as a tourist attraction with a lot of safety precautions. Specifically, you need an item called a Geiger counter. It's a tool that measures radiation. It makes a clicking sound when there's radiation nearby, and if it starts getting too loud, that means there's too much radiation, and you can't be in that area. The elephant's foot was contained after the, the discovery of it in two giant concrete vaults, so no more radiation is pouring out of it. It's now trapped. It's also illegal to visit Chernobyl, as it would be too dangerous. In conclusion, should we have nuclear power as energy seeing the events of this? I personally believe yes. Without electricity, we can't do much. Also, on the, on the statistics here, a nuclear power plant is more efficient than every other possible plant. Is there a way to stop problems like this? Absolutely. As long as you have scientists constantly keeping guard of what's happening, making sure it doesn't get too hot and cause another explosion, it will be completely fine. That concludes my story.